Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Daniel Missionary Baptist Church located here in Tuskegee, Alabama. We praise God that you have decided to tune in and to um, worship with us on this morning. And for those who have gathered here in the building, we say good morning. God bless you. We pray you all be morning. well. And we're so glad to see you this morning. Hallelujah. On this day, we know that this is one of the largest gathering days in America. And it's our prayer that as you gather together that you will allow Jesus to be the center of your gathering, that that will be your main centerpiece, your focal point, and that you will uplift the name of Jesus um, as you gather throughout the land today. We just pray that you will have safety, you will have peace, and that you will truly meditate and realize from where your freedom has come in the name of Jesus. If we can look at John, the book of John, chapter 8. Verse 36. Once again, for our morning scripture, before Pastor Keith come to share the word of the Lord this morning, in John chapter 8, verse 36, it states, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Very short, simple verse. It says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Mm -hmm. There is a price for freedom. There is a cost for us being free in Christ. Amen. And I believe the Lord is going to give Reverend Keith a word in season to help us to better understand what we have because of the shed blood and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray this morning. Father God, we thank you for this moment in time that you have allowed us, Lord God, to assemble once again in your presence as a collective body. For those, Lord God, that are physically present here, for those that are present, Lord God, via the teleconference line and via YouTube, oh God, we just say thank you for allowing us, Lord God, to have you on our minds this morning. Father God, we say thank you for allowing us to wake up, Lord God, to have breath in our bodies, Lord God, to have mobility of our limbs. Father God, we say thank you. And Father, we just thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. Thank and we you, thank God. you for the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. who died on the cross for our sins. Our sins, not his sins, but our sins. So Father, we thank you for allowing Jesus to be that bridge back to you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Father, we don't never want to lose sight of that. And Father, because of that, Father God, I pray, Father God, that there will be a burning desire, a restlessness within us, Lord God, to tell all about you. Mm -hmm. Father God, I pray that we will be witnesses in the earth, that our lifestyles will be that living a people's store for those who may not ever step foot in the four walls of a church. Yeah. Father, you said we are the ecclesia. Mm -hmm. We are the called out ones. So, Father, as we go forth, no matter where we are or whose presence we are in, yes. let us always exemplify Christ. Let us always lift up the name of Jesus in boldness. Yes. Father, it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, and we pray that you will anoint Pastor Keith this morning, Lord God, as he stands, Lord God, to share your word. Oh, Father, let it come through with simplicity and understanding. Let the very youngest child and the oldest member, Lord God, whoever, that the words fall upon their ears. Let them hear and let them understand. But most important, Father God, we pray that their lives would be convicted and converted unto you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray and give thanks. Amen? 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 Amen. amen. And amen. amen. amen.
to give God praise in the house. Let's give it up to him. Not because we have to, but because he deserves all our praise. Amen. We, live, we serve the only true and living God. There's no other like him. And it's okay to give him praise and honor and glory in the house this morning. He woke us up this morning. He gave us air to breathe. Imagine if we had to pay for the air that we have to breathe. He don't charge us anything. But it costs him everything. We serve a magnificent Savior. And his name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let's give it one more. Very big Hand that for praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Choir, thank you all so much. And Mr. Torbert, thank you so much for welcoming us this morning. Again, if you just now tune in, we thank you for being here with us today here at Daniel Missionary Baptist Church here in Tuskegee, Alabama on July 4th, 2021. God saw it fit for us to be here today, so we're going to worship him and praise him with every breath that we have. Amen. Amen. We know this is a holiday weekend. Many people are traveling. But we thank you for being here with us today. Amen. We thank you. There's so many that want to be here that could not be here. And we want to recognize them and continue to pray for them. Uh, we have uh, Sister Ernestine Willis is who at home. Uh, Sister uh, Deacon Edison, Sister Paralee Smith, Dr. Noel Thompson, Sister Bessie William Prince. And we also uh, have Brother Larry Welch. That's the husband of our very own sister, uh, Cassandra Hall Welch. Uh, he was in the hospital earlier this week and had to go back, I think, Friday night, last night. But I think my wife talked to him this morning. He's supposed to be coming home today. All right. He did. He did. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In the midst of everything that we go through, God is still good. That's why we are still here. He wants us to intercede and pray on behalf of one another. Amen. The devil don't take no time off, so we can't take time off. We may take time off our jobs. We may have a vacation, but we can never take time off from spending time in God's word, spending time with him and in prayer. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, and also, thank you, Sister Florence Moore. Let's remember her as she's at home. Amen? She gave us a good report. Uh, she went in for some tests this past Thursday. And they said her heart is well. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Glory be to God. He is good. All the time. He is good. Hallelujah. There's not no time that he is not good. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, let us remember our July birthdays. Uh, we have uh, Sister Janice Osborne Hickman, July 1st. Uh, Sister Alexandra Torbert, today, July 1st. And Sister Gaden Williams, July 21st. Let's give our birthday people a round of applause this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Jonas Bones, July 6th. Who was that? Jonas. Brother Jonas, yeah. July 6th. Yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. I apologize for that. Yeah. Amen. You know <laughs> well, we know it now. Yeah. now. Make sure it's on the list. Amen. Amen. Well, we, again, we know today uh, we're celebrating uh, our Independence Day here in the United States and maybe other countries as well. Mm -hmm. So we do give honor to our uh, men and women of armed forces that serve, mm -hmm. that have served, that have given their lives, their families that watched and prayed over them as they gave their lives. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it costs, as my wife said, it freedom costs. Yes, it does. Freedom costs. So we do want to give honor to them because, you know, a lot of us won't be able to enjoy some of the freedom that we have if God would not have given them the ability and the unction to go serve their country. Amen. They didn't have to do it, Amen. but they did it. They're doing it, and some have given their lives. Yes. Some have left their families and never seen their families again. Amen. And we do not want to uh, forget them. Mm -mm. We do not want to forget their families. So we give them honor and praise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that leads us in today's message. My wife said it today. 
earlier when she uh, greeted everyone. There's a price for freedom. That's the title of our message today. I'm going to read two small verses of scripture. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And then we're going to jump back to John chapter 8, verse 36. Did you turn there? That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And John chapter 8, verse 36. We said we give honor, we do give honor to our own men and women, armed forces, but I want you all to know today we give honor to Jesus. He paid the ultimate price, and we want to remember that every day. That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And then we're going to flip back over to John chapter 8, verse 36. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. The word of God reads, For all have sinned, and falling short of God's glory. Let me read that one more time. For all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. Let me read verse 24. It says, being justified freely. Remember that word, freely, by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. I'm going to flip over to John chapter 8, verse 36. And it says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let me read that one more time. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Oftentimes, not oftentimes, but more than we want to know, sometimes we make ourselves our own prisoner in our mind and the way we think and the things that we do and a lot of these things that we do and the way we think we do it because it was the nature that we were born into we've talked about this before we've talked about us being walking and being born into the nature of Adam we know that Adam uh, God created man in his own image Matter of fact, God said, uh, we was reading, me and my children read the other day, he said, we uh -huh. made man. We created him in our image. Uh -huh. That's fascinating. Uh -huh. God created everything in this earth, uh -huh. but when it came to man, uh -huh. he said, let us create them in our image. Uh -huh. That means that he created us in the image of who he is. Uh -huh. That is powerful. Yeah. Adam had it made in the garden. Didn't have to worry about anything. God gave him dominion and power over everything in the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He just gave him one simple command. Mm -hmm. Do not eat of this tree. Well, we know what happened. Mm -hmm. He did it. That mm -hmm. he was completely separated from the love of God. Amen. Instead of being loved, he was now in need of love. Mm -hmm. He couldn't walk in the cool of the day with God any longer. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the shroud of sin has separated Adam from God. And we jump on down to it. The Bible says we, in our mother's womb, we were born into iniquity. Uh -huh. You probably said, Pastor, why do you keep reminding me? I'm not trying to bring you a remembrance of it, but I'm trying to show you that the nature that we were born in is the, not the nature that we live freely in now. Amen. See, when we were born in our mother's womb, he said we're born into iniquity. That means we, the, uh, the nature that we have is to sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The nature that we were born into, it was born to sin. Mm -hmm. See, we think sin is things that you do bad. Yeah. Sin is being separated from the love of God. Mm -hmm. Sin is falling out of a pathway that is separated from God. That's why when it says repent, it means turn away from the lifestyle you're living into the lifestyle of Christ. Mm -hmm. See, Christ wants us to start by living the image that we were created in. Mm -hmm. That's why in Romans chapter 3, 
it says, for all have sinned. Well, I ain't never seen a pastor. I never did anything wrong. I never cussed anybody out. I give, I do, but that's not true. It's just because you were born, you were born into sin. So it's not about the works alone that you do. Don't be fooled. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But verse 24 says being justified freely. We love, we love to hear that word free. Somebody yeah. offers something free, we going after. Yeah. And I'm right there with you. Yeah, I like <laughs> I'm right there with you. You may didn't have to pay for whatever you give, but somebody had to pay for yeah. it. Yeah. 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 You may be getting free, you know, maybe offer free lunch somewhere, or free car wash, or free books, but somebody had to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, somebody paid for it. Yeah. When we give to third world countries and we sow seeds into other countries mm -hmm. and all these things, mm -hmm. they are reaping the benefits that God has given us the grace to give. They didn't have to pay for it, but somebody had to pay for it. Yes. 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 God has given us resources to be able to finance his kingdom. Mm -hmm. But there was one resource that we couldn't pay for. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much we try to pay I don't care how much good we try to do, it cannot wash away our sins. That's why there was a price for our freedom. Just like Independence Day, July 4th, uh, 1776, the United States gained their freedom, their independence. But I tell you, there were 2,000 years ago. God didn't say, I'm going to wait till they sin, then you're going to die. He died before we were even born. Amen. So what did that say to me? He paid for the price of your sins before you were even thought of. Amen. He knew what it was going to take to buy you back to the fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the price that Christ paid for our freedom. Yes. Not just for us church folk, but it says for all. Some people have it twisted. Some people don't believe that God is real. And I can't condemn them. We can only tell the truth and share the truth. But I do say this. What if you're wrong? Think about what I'm saying now. We know that the wages of sin of death, but the gift of God is eternal life. There's some people that do not believe that God's son came from heaven to die on the earth for the sin of all mankind. They don't believe that God raised him from the dead and he's sitting on the right hand side of the Father intercede on behalf of you and I. But what if you're wrong? I want to live the life, my life the way I want to live it. I don't want to submit to a God that's not real that I can't see, smell, and touch. Amen. But what if you're wrong? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. There's a death. I'm not talking about your physical body that's dying. I'm talking about an eternal death. Where you're damned to hell for all eternity. Mm -hmm. Hell is not the final place. The Bible says over in, uh, over in uh, Revelation, when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. hell is going to be cast mm -hmm. into the lake of fire. Yes. Think about it. Mm -hmm. July, August, mm -hmm. some of the hottest summer days it is in the year. Mm -hmm. We try to make it to get fans and air conditioners, all this kind of thing. We can't stand this heat. Mm -hmm. Well, how in the world, if you can't stand the heat of the summer, mm -hmm. that you want to gather with your life and you're going to spend all eternity in the lake of fire burning for all eternity? There will be no recollection. There will be no please give me another chance. Your chance is now. Is there? A t Do you want to take that chance? Do you want to play Russian roulette with your life? Well, science has proven that God is not for real. Do you want to take that chance? God, it doesn't cost you anything to receive Christ as your Savior. It costs you just to submit to him. But we don't want to do it because we want to live the lifestyle that we're living now. That's why the devil don't want us to have Christ. That's why he uses things to blind us. He uses things of this world to numb us to God. 
So we don't want to hear about God. We want to put him out of everything that we had once had him in. He does, the devil don't even want Christ's name mentioned. And it's sad. It's more than sad. It, it grieves Jesus' heart. He gave his very life, regardless if you believe him or not. What if you're wrong? What if you wake, wake up and you're wrapped at the judgment seat of Christ? All things that you have ever done is shown unto you. And you said, but no one ever told me about you. I, I, and he will, every, every time somebody mentioned Christ about you, it's going to be revealed to you. Do you want to take a chance with your life, your freedom? Your freedom has been paid for and bought for by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony. That's true freedom. I'm not taking anything away from our men and women in armed forces, those who provide freedom for us and law enforcement. I'm not taking anything away from them. But God created the ones that are fighting the wars that has given us our freedom. Over here in John chapter 8, uh, verse 36 says, Whom the Son has free, set free, you are free indeed. Mm -hmm. Don't ever let the devil fool you and say what you experienced in Christ is not real. Mm -hmm. It is very real. But you have to make a personal relationship with Jesus. Amen. We cannot, and I keep saying this over and over because it had to continue to say, it took me a long time to get this in mind. That's why I'm going to continue to preach as God gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Our name on the church roll ain't going to cut it. No. Us coming into the four walls of this building ain't going to cut it. No, Us just being baptized alone is not going to cut it. No. Us just giving our tithe and offering is just not going to cut it. No, but we have to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. That's the only way the way he's going to be able to set us free. See, what Adam did in the garden, the Bible said, oh, in Genesis, go read it for yourself. Adam was able to talk with God, walk with God. In the coolness of the day, he had a constant fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. He could talk to him at any time, but when he sinned, that, that relationship was cut off. Mm -hmm. But God had another plan in place. The ultimate sacrifice, his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says, oh, uh, oh, in John chapter 14, verse 6, there's only one way to the Father, and that's through his son, Jesus. Amen. It's the only way that we're going to be able to get back to our Father, our original purpose in him, the creation. He created us in his own image. He set us free. We can walk as Adam did when we accept Christ. Amen. We can walk with God and talk with him and commune with him. How is that possible? And God's in heaven. No, the Bible, my Bible tells me the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, he lives on the inside of us. So that means the same spirit, the way Jesus walked and talked and communed with the Father and got along with him, that same spirit lives on the inside of us. And the same power that Jesus has, we as the church are supposed to have, but the devil has fooled us and said, this is not for the day. God is not doing miracles for the day. He is a liar. We just bought into a lie, and we don't want to learn and see what Christ has. But when the Holy Spirit tells you to walk up to somebody, lay hands on the sick, and he's telling you they're going to recover, you better believe they're going to recover. Amen. 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 I remember 1998, me and my wife was in Oprah Lock and Wendy Dixon. Uh, a gentleman walked was at night. He, he approached us, and you know, you kind of at night, you're trying to be weird, people approaching. Yeah. But he just said, I have some. God wants me to tell you guys. All right. All right. It was 1998. He said, I'm believing that God is telling me that you all going to have seven children. All right. Amen. All right. I said, okay. okay. Praise God. Uh -huh. Life's about all right. Yeah. Because <laughs> the doctor just had told us that you would never be able to have children. See that? So now I'm dealing with the, re the fact what the doctor has said. Mm -hmm. Or the reality that God uses somebody to speak life mm -hmm. into us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it didn't happen right then. No. He didn't say it. As matter of fact, we just began to doubt. Mm -hmm. My wife began to be sorrowful. Mm -hmm. You know, after you married some time, we had been married going on 10 years. Well, why are they having children yet? Well, what's wrong with them? And, you know, you begin to feel bad. But normally, either, you know, after one, two, maybe three years, they're going to start to have children. Well, people kept asking us questions, and we began to be sorrowful. Mm -hmm. 
Well, thanks be to God. We moved, I'm gonna tell you this testimony. We moved to Atlanta and we thank be to God. Uh, we became part of the intercessory team there. We had a lot of people praying for us. We had a lot of people praying. They knew that we desired to have children. Mm -hmm. But God had to supernaturally step in. And my wife probably won't get mad at me saying it. But as a young woman, my wife did not have the natural flow of a woman. But 2002, mm -hmm. the leader of our intercessory team gave my wife a little small book. Mm -hmm. Just had a scripture. She told my wife, just confess these scriptures over your body. Amen. There was nothing special. There was scriptures right out of this Bible. All right. All right. But she got up every morning at the same time. And within three weeks, that natural flow started. If you're a woman, if you're on any age of man, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. That was in 2002. Mm -hmm. uh, June, March, is February, March uh, 2003, our pastor called a free night revival. Everybody was fasting and praying. He invited a young man from Ohio to come in. He had been praying over a lot of people. His last call was, there's people in here that are desiring to have children but it is physically impossible for you to have them. The doctor told you couldn't. All right. Me and my wife went up. We had been prayed over before, but hey, we still hey. Mm -hmm. We went up along with a lot of other people. The man of God prayed over us, and he said, uh, I believe I hear God saying within 30 days, you're going to hear the paddle, paddle, little feet. All right. I said, God, I know you can work miracles, but 30 days. <laughs> but see, the, our finite thinking cannot match God's wisdom. That was March. Uh -huh. Well, my wife, she at that time we stayed in um, Life Only Georgia. My every day my wife used to run around Stone Mountain. This particular it was Memorial Day weekend in 2003. She had gotten sick, couldn't couldn't feel like she was going around that mountain. Got off work. We went to intercessor prayer. We had intercessor prayer on Friday nights from seven to eight. We went there. It was just me and my wife and one other intercessor. The lady walked up to my wife and said, "You are praying." Uh -huh. We just thought she was being super spiritual. Mm -hmm. She said, no, mm -hmm. you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said, yeah, we heard that before. I didn't tell mm -hmm. her that. Mm -hmm. But we went home, watching. We sat down, and we were just sitting together, had had dinner. Stopped by and got a test anyway. She took it. When she showed it to me, she said, you better look at this again. Mm -hmm. It was positive. All right. All right. There's a madness to my story that I'm telling you. All right. So when she went to the doctor, it was more than a weekend. The doctor was not open on that Monday. I think she, it was late on that week she went to the doctor. When they had counted everything back, it was 30 days to the time that man had prayed over them, prophesied that in 30 days you're going to hear the pitter paddle of little feet. All right, all right. Our firstborn Mary was born the next year. Right. And the floodgates were opened ever since. All right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Thanks be to God. Yeah. Seven years. Yeah. Seven years, a lot of people had told us y'all should have bought stock in Pampers and Diapers because we went 13, 14 years of buying Diapers, Pampers. That's a miracle in itself. My mother in law said, You better, even if you ain't buying no money, she said, You better put that same money aside because you'll be a rich man. But I said all this to say this God still speaks today. God still provides miracles today. But we have to believe. When God says you to do something, you do it. Now, we had struggles. We had trials. We went through 10 years of hearing, we want to have children. People praying for us. We had gotten weary and well doing, but God kept his promise. We are no respected person. There's nothing special about me and Marlene. The same thing that he would do for us, he would do it for you, whatever your situation and circumstance is. You have to get out of your comfort zone, and you got to believe God. Doctors, God has given them wisdom, and knowledge, and understanding to medicine, but they only practice. God has the final say-so in your life. Just like that woman with the issue of blood had given everything that she had for 12 years. But when she turned it over to Jesus, she reckoned in her heart, all I got to do is touch the hem of his garment. God Almighty, I'm going to be healed. And when she touched the hem of his garment, power came from heaven, flowed down through Jesus, and went through that woman and healed her. And then Jesus turned around and said, Who touched you? Are you crazy? All these people touching you? Tomorrow? No. Somebody touched me with faith and it pulled power from heaven through my body and healed her. Faith. 
is what's going to touch Jesus. That's what he died for. That's the price that he paid for your freedom. We are only temporary here on this earth, but our we are citizens of heaven. We have to pray that God continues. Heaven invades earth. He invades our heart. So we will know that we are free and free indeed. And his name is Jesus. Don't ever let anybody tell you that Jesus is not real. Run from him. You hold your peace. You stand on the solid rock of Christ. And do not be moved. He paid for your life with his very breath. His blood washed away all your sins. And all you got to do is ask him. Father, I'm going through this right now. I'm at my end rope. I, I don't have anywhere else to go. I repent of my sins. I need you to forgive me for everything I've ever done. Jesus, I invite you into my heart to make you Lord over my life. And I believe that God raised you for the dead for me. If you believe that, you will be saved. It's already been paid for. Your freedom has already been paid for. You just have to believe. And I'm done. Only believe Jesus has paid for your freedom. Yes, yes, yes. Read your Bible. Yes. This is your last will and testament. Yes. All your inheritance that you have is in this book. You just need to read it to know what your inheritance is. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, go buy a bookstore, order one online, go to a friend's house, I guarantee you that I got five or ten laying around the house. Yeah, that's right. Call us. Go to www.danielbaptist.org. If you don't have a Bible, we will help you get one. This is so important. Don't you know in certain countries people are being killed for even trying to hold a Bible? Don't you know some people are tearing pages out of a Bible, ripping them up and rolling them up and hiding them in places we wouldn't even think to hide them just so they can regurgitate the word of God. One little piece of scripture. They holding them to faith. Amen. But we in our country, we are free and we won't read it. Amen. We need to read and know the word of God. Amen. Let's give God the biggest praise for our freedom that we can give him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I turn over to the Lord. Chapter 1, the first 1 to 3 verses. 
everything that we need. God got it. God got it. That's why he said, pray his kingdom be done here on earth as it is in heaven. See, God wants us to pray his kingdom down from heaven onto earth so earth can see the reality of who God is. Amen. I'm not going to preach again. He's real. He's real. He's real. I am so happy. I'm so full of joy. Sometimes we say, Pastor, what do we have to be so joyous about? Every time we turn around, there's so much evil going on in the world. Yes, yes, yes. Buildings collapsing, mm -hmm. children are dying, mm -hmm. parents are dying. All, but God said these things are going to happen. He told us to have joy, his joy. Mm -hmm. We can keep wishing these things are going to change, but they're going to happen because of sin. Because, but God wants us, he told his disciples, have my joy, have my peace. In the midst of everything that's going on, that's the only thing that's going to keep you. The only thing. He paid for it all. He paid for it all. If you're able to stand, please stand. Go ahead and sing, Mother and all. situations and circumstances where it seems like there is no peace but you are our peace 
and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the word of God that's been preached today. We pray, Lord God, that it resonate in the heart of your people and that you reach a hundredfold blessing out of your word in the lives of your people today, Lord. Father, we ask you to keep us safe and sound. Cover and seal us in the blood. Protect all of us from any hurt, harm, or danger from the evil one, oh God. If we're traveling, we pray for traveling mercies, oh God. No mechanical accidents. No mechanical failures. We know the war, the weapon has been formed, but it will not come against us, oh God. That's your word. And we thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for everything that we have that's wrapped up in Christ Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise. Now to him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And we all together sing. Amen.